So what's driving Aubrey de Grey in his crusade against old age and death? I felt I needed to know more about the real Aubrey. I tracked down an undergraduate friend of his called John McGuinness, who shares Aubrey's passion for punting. Together, they once beat Oxford. Well, a very unusual, very unusual person. He speaks very quickly. He speaks faster than anyone else I know. I don't know if he listens at the same rate. Most people would call him mad. I think his upbringing, more so than most of us, I think he had quite a, a disjointed, uh, unusual... perhaps unbalanced upbringing. John told me Aubrey was an only child who never knew his father. He was brought up by his mother, Cordelia, in a big old house in Chelsea. I thought I'd like to meet Mrs. de Grey and asked Aubrey to take me to see her at the nursing home where she was staying while her Chelsea house was being done up. Hello. How are you today? Um, um, uh, I've got no teeth today. <laughs> when Aubrey was a child, what did you want for him? What did I want for him? I wanted him to be something special and to, you know, be an important person. And, um, and I also wished he had better manners. <laughs> and are you pleased with how he's turned out? Oh, yes, of course. I don't, I'm not mad about that beard, I can tell you. He, he grew it well. I, I, one day when we had a slight row, not for long, but I was very angry when I saw it, and now nothing I can do about it. <laughs> he thinks it's marvellous. How do you feel about the idea of living forever? I think it's great. <laughs> uh, but I'm just beginning. I mean, I've got to get some tooth implants. That's the first thing. That's why I'm, I'm just about to start my life. I mean, I'm only 71 and a half. And that, 81, that, I mean, and <laughs> 81 and a half. 81 and a half. I, mean, I can never remember that. It's so unbelievable. I just don't believe it myself. <laughs> I'm 81 and a half. So Aubrey's mother got what she wanted, a son who's both special and important. And Aubrey's got what he doesn't want, someone he loves who's going to die. After leaving Cambridge with a degree in computer science, Aubrey worked in software development and met the love of his life, Adelaide Carpenter, an expert on fruit fly genetics. It was Adelaide who taught Aubrey biology, and in no time he got a PhD, which led to his investigations into ageing. This was where he felt he could make a real difference to the world and his wife. She's 19 years older than Aubrey. I hope to benefit from some of those um, ameliorations myself. What do you mean by that? I'm 62. I'm, st I'm starting, my body is starting to show the side effects. We've just got a, an absolutely wonderful thing going. And yesterday was our 15th anniversary. Adelaide is a bench scientist, like most of Aubrey's detractors, and I wondered what she thinks about their attacks on her husband. One of the things that makes Aubrey's whole game plan difficult to assess is that the different ideas come from different fields, and no bench scientist can has the time to read the literature widely outside of his or her own field. His detractors do not have that broad a, ba a base of knowledge. And they certainly give the impression of not being willing to read his papers. But it is certainly not the case that the entire scientific community thinks, he, thinks he's a crackpot. So is he, or isn't he? I like Aubrey a lot, but I still don't know if he's the new Darwin. 
We'll just have to wait and see. But that could take a hundred years or more. If Aubrey's right, then I suppose he'll be around to celebrate. I won't. I'm already too old. And so is Adelaide, which is sad because Aubrey wasn't interested in aging research and immortality until he met her. And whatever he may say about what drives him, I suspect it was a love story all along.